First off, a couple of thank yous. Thank you for the national partnership for everything that you've done over the last 45 years. Because through your efforts, we've been able to make the changes necessary to make our worlds possible. And more importantly, thank you for what you continue to do and will do to accelerate the changes that actually bring those dreams to life. Thank you to the corporate sponsors and the individual sponsors. As Deborah said, a record-setting number of attendees here tonight, and again, with a million dollars raised, it's amazing how much that gives the organization the ability and the power to do the things that are necessary to get everything done that you've been hearing about. And last but not least, the things that Deborah talked about and what you saw in the video are not possible because of me. It's actually because of the PwC people that are in the audience tonight and the 44,000 or so that we have in our offices in the U.S. and the 240 some odd thousand around the world because none of that happens without the individuals. And our organization with an average age of 27 has to be empowered and that's what it's all about. And our brand only gets recognized. In fact, they do what we aspire to actually achieve. So thank you to all of the groups. Congratulations to each of the honorees. You're here for a reason tonight to recognize your contributions, and I'm honored, privileged, and humbled to be sharing the stage with you tonight as the corporate sponsor, so thank you for that. Deborah talked about dreams, and we as a country, we as organizations, and we as individuals all have a series of dreams and aspirations. And when you look around the world, isn't it the responsibility of responsible leaders to help enable those dreams? Be it from a career aspiration perspective, a better economic fulfillment perspective, or from a personal perspective to take care of your friends, your families, your loved ones, and do everything that you personally aspire to do. And that's what we see time and time again when we see government with responsible leaders and business with responsible leaders coming together to think about both policy as well as procedures and infrastructure to bring it to life in all that we do. And at PwC, we've been privileged enough to be recognized for what we do from a diversity perspective. Last 10 years being in Working Mothers Magazine Top 10, Organizations for Working Mothers. Last six years, the only organization that's been on Diversity Inc.'s Top 5 list, which is great. But, Kenley, it doesn't matter. The recognition doesn't matter unless, in fact, what you're doing inside the place is reality rather than the accolades you might get from the eyes of others. But the other thing those accolades gives you is a chance to actually travel around the world and talk to a number of officials in government, in local communities, and with businesses to see what's working and what's not. And that's why I come back to this concept of responsible leadership. Because when you have it, Things happen. Words turn into action, action turns into results, and results has the impact that all of us have talked about that fulfills the dreams of the individuals, the corporates, the country, and the like. And there's benefit for all that share with that. You saw in the video a few things around our flexibility programs. Let me just share a little bit more history of what we did there. A couple of years ago, we said flexibility is usually important to our employees if in fact we want to give them the ability to achieve the personal and professional dreams that they have. Well, you need programs to incent the right behaviors because there's an unconscious bias, or maybe sometimes a conscious bias, to do things a different way. So why not put a program in place to make that come to life? We actually told the entire PwC workforce, come up with the best plan possible for the team, not the individual, the team to achieve flexibility. We had 2,000 plans submitted that impacted 30,000 people, that they figured out a way that if you need to do something that morning, I'll take your back and have you covered if you, in fact, take care of my back. And collectively, the we will make the flexibility come for life for an individual. The best part of this was actually when we did this in a professional services firm that's client-focused, where you've always got to be front and center in terms of serving clients, the best plans were the ones that actually engaged our clients in the process and actually inspired other organizations to start to do the same. Second, we had to spend a tremendous amount of time, yes, costly, but nonetheless valuable, to create the right infrastructure. 
to allow people to work any place, any time, anywhere. Giving them technology, giving them the ability to do the things you saw there on the videos. And while an expenditure, the payback's been tremendous. Increased productivity, increased retention, and the ability to be a talent magnet. And if you really want to look ahead and think about the future of the US and the future of those that are going to be in the future workforce, what's an interesting phenomenon in the next five to 10 years, 40% of the labor force arguably may be independent contractors. Knowing that, what are we doing to enable people to successfully find the work to fulfill their individual dreams as independents? So we actually had to create something called Talent Exchange, basically an app, leveraging again technology, with an Uber-like function to put out all the projects that we do and for people to submit their resume and basically play match. I don't want to call it match.com because God knows where you'll go with that thinking. But the reality was, we launched this app, and literally within a week had close to 5,000 people apply for specific jobs on a flexible arrangement. But folks, that's the realities of the trends we see in this country and around the world in terms of how workforces will shift. And therefore, we, society, we, businesses, we, governments, we, local community leaders, have to be thinking about new policies and procedures and also leading with a responsible element to drive the change that help women and families be successful. Now, as I leave the stage, because I again, am honored about this, and you understand a little bit more my passion around this, here's my big ask. It is very clear when organizations, corporate or business, communicate, probably better said engage, in a two-way dialogue and actually create a win-win, everybody can be successful. Second, when your employees see that you care, and that's an important fact, the productivity increases, the quality increases, the consistency increases. And oh, by the way, that becomes the best advertising agency you could ever hire in terms of attracting the best talent. And for an organization, for an organization like PwC where our only asset is our people, Responsible leadership would actually say it's absolutely the right thing to do. Conversely, if not, isn't it irresponsible? Irresponsible as a leader, irresponsible as a government official, irresponsible as somebody in society. And I leave you with that concept for a second just to pause on, which is leadership is not those with a title. Leadership is all within each and every single one of us. Regardless of your job, regardless of your responsibilities, regardless of your title in an organization, and regardless of whether you're at home dealing with young kids, elderly parents, or otherwise, leadership is actually somebody's ability to create opportunities for others, to help them achieve the unachievable, to inspire them to do things they never thought themselves were possible. And thankfully, you've got organizations that do that every day, you've got government officials that do that each and every day, and you've got an organization like the National Partnership for Women and Families that are actually making those dreams come to life. Folks, take these messages, not to yourself and internalize them. Take the message to the unconverted. And my ask as I leave this stage is go out there and have a goal of getting 10 or 20 or 30 other people that aren't here tonight empowered, inspired, inspired and ultimately rise up to the responsible leadership that's necessary to make those dreams come true. Thank you very much and enjoy the evening.